The change doubles the burden on Barry. And for veteran Matt, it's double the pressure. This should be pretty interesting. I haven't flown with only two before. So it's just going to take some feeling out to uh, get back into another groove, because it's like starting over again. One dude out is going to change the entire game. Hey, they're saying this is two by cat alphas. AC's team leads the talk. AC's team leads the talk. Uh, let's do this. We got a We don't know injuries at all. We got lacerations, possible eyesight. We got the one by leg amputee. Oh, we got that to that, right? Yes. Two US mil. Oh. Wow. Scramble, scramble, scramble. Two Americans are in critical condition. Yeah, now we are uh, 010 for 28. All right, let's go. Let's take traps. Ready to back your 061. Hey! Ready to do this? Mist gives PJ's crucial information about the wounded to prepare for treatment. We just like to get updated. Mist, we only have missed one individual. I'll copy. Patient one, IED blast, laceration, possible eye sight. Patient two, IED blast, leg amputation. Break. Two Americans, uh, one has an amputation, and the other one has laceration, the eye sight. It might have took a lot of the blasts in, in, into his face, too. Just from looking at the, some of the message traffic, we know that they were, like, right on top of the ID when it went off. OK, now, hold on. What was the uh, update from the hot seat? Uh, just two uh, US mil. OK, so we're picking up two. We're going to pick up two Turkish. Is that going to hurt you with only having two medics right now? Do you want to have a medic come blood bird, or how do you want to work this? And near the IED blast, where the Americans were wounded, the threat of other enemy mines is high. will be the first seriously wounded Americans Barry has treated. First American, one leg amputated below the knee. He's clinging to consciousness. First patient's coming in. Keep still getting a medical hand, uh, handoff. I got two
Got his wheels up three one, so I believe it's a 15 20 minute flight. You know, time is always of the essence, with especially with amputations and bleeding. It may seem like it's uh, not that long, but 30 minutes could be a, a serious amount of time. both focus on the first American. He's lost a massive amount of blood from the amputation. His condition is critical. second counts, the commander orders the air crew to split up. The pilot with the patience throttles up to full power, leaving his wingman behind. blood, the first soldier's vital signs hold steady. Matt moves to relieve the second soldier's pain. In our tower, Peter, 6 one regiment of F. 40 minutes since the call came in. The golden hour counts down. 6-1, inbound. Two Americans in critical condition reach the NATO hospital. One. It's been 50 minutes since the call came in. Madden. Hey, how you doing? All right, so get an amputation to his right leg. Okay. Below the knee. I got half a unit of blood on board. Okay. Last set of vitals, satting at 98, pulse was in the 120s. IO or not? ID. No IO in, no, no IO in place, and I did not give him any meds. He got blood. Okay. Hi, I'm Dr. Ricks. Tell me where you hurt. Hey, talk to me. Everywhere, okay. The other guy was the one that received, tw got 25 milligrams of ketamine, as well as uh, he had been given morphine. I'm not sure how much at the site, but he was. So morphine and ketamine? Morphine and ketamine on board. Vital signs? A stable. Stable throughout. Hey, boss, what's your name? I'm Just give me a blood pressure on, on whatever arm you can. I need blood quickly. 59 over 38. Give me the blood. I'll hook it up to the IO and see what we can get. Here, no, don't take it off. Just pull out that <laughs> One person on this leg, one person on the pelvis, and one person. Who's uh, going to check and tell me when the OR is ready? We'll find out if the OR is ready. Gonna hold this leg. Hold this leg. Okay. One, three, one, two, three. Okay. I'm going to need a lot of cutting, my guys. Get a line. Strong femoral pulse. 
I'm going to need cryo or type and cross and at least 10. He's going to need a lot. Okay. As far as injuries, those, those were the worst injuries I've ever seen. He's got an amp on the right. He's got a large soft tissue defect on the left. It was just, I don't know. It was humbling, for sure. You're going to be okay. Let's uh, go ahead and give him another 50 of ketamine, please. We're going to intubate. Once I get a good blood pressure, we're going to intubate, okay? Good feeling that we saved some lives today, even though they were in really bad shape. I feel like they're gonna go home and see some family again real fast, which is good. We feel um, fortunate that the missions have gone in the progression they have. Every patient I've had is worse than the patient that came before. If this had been my first mission, I very well could have locked up. I, I don't know how I would have handled it. Um, it's not really a feeling that I can describe. It's not something I've, uh, I've ever felt before. It makes me feel more angry than anything. I don't know. It's, your first, it's my first real critical patient that was an American. And uh, while we went, while we render the same treatment to everyone we see, we do the best. I guess the, I guess it might come down to the, the parallels, you know, you, you, and it's, uh, it's another one of your brothers. You know, it's, uh, it's a little different. I mean, he was uh, an amputee, but he was, still alive, you know? It feels good to be here in country. That might seem unusual to some, but at this moment, there's nowhere else I'd rather be. Time off before deployment always flies by. Let me too. I love you too. I love you. It's bittersweet when that short amount of time comes to a close and you have to say goodbye to the people you care about, leaving the comforts of home and those we love behind, setting out as brothers to carry out our mission to do the job that we love. These deployments move along day by day, flight by flight. There will be downtime, days to relax and watch movies and have conversations around the dinner table with the guys, days to call our family and friends, let them know that we're doing fine, but we miss them, <laughs> days to train, better prepare ourselves for the next call. I hope in the coming months, we'll continue getting chances to make a difference. I hope when someone is out there on the ground having the worst day of their life, we can make sure they get the chance to return home safely. That's what it's all about. That's what we live for.